Good morning, everyone. We are back, just like I said. Uh, at the earlier time than I think I said. Or maybe not. I don't know. Either way, we are here, and we are continuing. We are now, I'm pretty sure, unless there's something else I've missed, officially into the Citizen Sleeper DLC. Took us 96 cycles, but... If you look at the previous stream or episode, whether you're on Twitch or at some point YouTube, I will be uploading this weekend's streams, uh, written 72. We had like 18 endings. I used, I got through all the drives, all the quests, and all that's left is Flotilla Aid, which I know for sure is the DLC. So, unless somewhere hidden, is yet another let's just move this so I can get to the thing yeah upside down there we go um, what was I saying? <clears throat> yeah unless there's another hidden quest somewhere I don't think so I think I've done everything I can for uh, Emphis and Caster Unless Caster's got something new for me in the DLC. Uh, I have an apartment. I have a stray cat. I opened a bar over here. I eventually helped Lem and Mina get onto the side real horizon. Uh, the first guy that helped me out, never talked to him again. Might be more with uh, Fang, who helped me get rid of my tracer. Tracker. The... Uh, demon squiggly thing from the Matrix, it's gone. Its evil counterpart is gone. And, uh, yeah. And my last gig with Bliss, she's gone. And, uh, there was a whole thing with the Doctor with Sabine, they're gone. Uh, foiled something, I think it was with Habitage. Either way, oh, well, actually no, let's uh, complete a cycle, so yeah, so we are going into the DLC, there's apparently three episodes of it, so this will be episode one, I don't think we're going to clear everything today in the next couple hours, but that's what's happening, um, so we are definitely at the tail end, we have finished the base game of Citizen Sleeper, I have enjoyed it immensely, I mentioned before, as a kid one of my favorite things was to choose your own adventure books, and uh, they were always a lot of fun. I enjoyed just, I mean, I would tear through them in like an afternoon, right? Because you're just, you're just flipping through, you know, you're just going through, oh, what if I did that, what if I, well, I know. So, decision-based kind of gaming, uh, I'm very into that. Um, you know, anything that reminds me even somewhat remotely of Witcher 3, I'm down for. Oh, hey, buy some scrap. Unload containers. Offloading scrap. Isn't that nice? Uh, actually, you know what? I will buy some scrap. It's only 16, right? Look how much money I got. I got paid. Anyway, speaking of money, getting paid. Well, not getting paid, no, it's speaking of money. I am, of course, an Extra Life streamer. And this is my sixth year with Extra Life. Best thing I do all year. I specifically support Sick Kids Toronto because when I was a kid, way back, a very, very long time ago, in the before times, before cell phones even, or at least before they were everywhere. Uh, I had leukemia a couple times, and thanks to sick kids, and of course my mother just knowing I'm gonna make it, and she was right, so, you know, moms are always right. Uh, I'm here, i am never stopped gaming. Um, one of my most favorite memories is finally beating Lavos and Chrono Trigger, where my hands were cold and shaky at the end of that, um, and I hadn't, you know, Super, Ni oh, Super Nintendo, still my favorite console. I had, you know, between A Link to the Past and Chrono Trigger, damn, best, two best games ever. Uh, I haven't been that impressed. A game, games haven't, a game hasn't lived in my head. I mean, A Link to the Past and Chrono Trigger still do. 
a game hasn't lived in my head since those two until Witcher 3. Uh, and I did play Witcher 1 and 2 before 3. Um, but uh, Witcher 3 I play every year. Uh, I have perhaps a number of hours into that game across several versions. The original version, the complete version on PS4, and then of course the new updated version on PS5. Um, the only other game I've bought on several consoles is Grand Theft... well actually no, well Grand Theft Auto being the most recent I have it on 3, 4, and 5, Grand Theft Auto 5 specifically. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, Chrono Trigger, I had that on Super Nintendo, I had the, uh, was it the PS1 version, so I could play it on my PS2, and I think the PS3 could play it as well, I can't remember now, and I also have it on my phone, because it's Chrono Trigger, it's, it's wonderful, uh, and if there's a way to get it on my Switch Lite, I think I would do that. I should look into that. I never even thought of trying to do that. Maybe it's on the Nintendo store. Anyway, enough advertising. Uh, I can advertise. Yes, I am an Extra Life streamer. So you will see the links uh, to my Facebook fundraiser page, my actual Extra Life page. You can make your donations through there. Uh, all of your donation goes to Sick Kids. I don't keep anything. Um, that's how that goes. If you need to reach out to me, Risen72 on Twitter, on Instagram, on Threads, even though I'm still trying to get into the habit of using threads. Um, also, these videos are posted later. Uh, Ridden72 on YouTube. It's Ridden72 everywhere. Um, if you have a social platform and I can't get Ridden72, I'm not going to be on that social platform. So yeah, any questions, anything like that, especially about Extra Life or becoming an Extra Life streamer, do it. Be an Extra Life streamer. It's great. Always do that. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Anyway, so feed the cat. This could be the last time because in the DLC, maybe I'll move over wherever it goes over there. Uh, we have a self-repair perk. Also, thanks to all the work in the Greenway section, um, I can repair myself using scrap. Uh, well, no. That, that was a perk, sorry. The self-repair is a perk. Because of all the work in the Greenway, can actually grow stabilizers. Uh, so I don't need to buy them. Uh, so I'm sitting on seven of them. Because most of the time, I just use a dice or two, make sure I have some scrap going. And uh, some quests, some little side things will uh, award you with uh, scrap as well. But anyway, so that's all the perks there. I pretty much maxed out everything. Everything else left takes three to do. Ooh, two sixes. Yeah, I'll keep that. Two sixes are hard to pass up. Um, yeah. You know what, this, it's gonna be a while before we see Emphis, probably. If at all, ever again. Some nasty noodle mushroom fungus thing for breakfast. I swear, big, big mushroom is, is all over this game. I don't even know what the company name. That's how good they are. You don't even know who is Big Mushroom, right? Like, you know, big computers. That would be. Um, I don't know. I'm talking nonsense, but either way. Climbing Briar. Here we go. Welcome to Episode Flux. After that, we'll be Refuge and Purge. But right now, we're going to go through Flux. Insert two Griel. Uh, no, you know, I've probably been saying that wrong this whole time. Gorillas? G Rollies? I don't know. More annoying than a regular mushroom is a mushroom whose name is tricky. And I've never heard that word spoken before, so I have no idea. But here, yeah, take your nasty mushrooms. Go ahead. I don't want them. You came, says Peek. Peek smiles as you walk into the climbing... Yeah, climbing Briar's cargo hold behind a gloomy esh. Yeah, she's always got a sour look on her face. They brought mushrooms. Ash tosses the mushroom caps onto a crate, raising her eyebrows at Peek. Peek gives her a look. Thank you, sleeper. They pick one up and sniff it. Are these edible? Try it. Peek squints at you and the mushroom before Delgui putting it back down. Oh, wait. Wow. No trust. 
How are we going to start this wonderful DLC relationship if there's no trust? Hold on. I'm just now realizing I haven't silenced everything because I try to be a professional streamer. I often fail, but... A for effort, right? Anyway, we're not so used to fresh produce. Ash is securing crates as she speaks and doesn't look up. Hawthorne doesn't have much in the way of farming. Hawthorne? I'd go for the other one normally, but, you know, it's all about... Let's get some information going. Insulation we grew up on. Ash wipes off her hands on a rag. XPR loves to name their property after natural things, but that's about as far as their relationship with plant life goes. XPR? This an interrogation, she glares. Either way, we are done with this, with that place, which is all I need to know. Ash leans back against the crate she was securing. We are going to need more than a few mushrooms if you, we want to help these refugees, those refugees, through. Why are they trapped? What do they need? Food, water, components, a whole lot of things. Ash stands and walks over to the mushrooms she brought, placing them into a small container with care. The problem isn't just getting supplies, it's getting them through to the ships. Can't you speak to Havenage? We aren't exactly welcome guests, Peek explains. If anyone figures out that we came in with the refugee ships, we'll be quarantined as well. Why is there a quarantine? Peek jumps in. The eye has a closed loop life support system, just like any orbital installation. Any unfamiliar illness or significantly increased strain on life support could cause a cascading collapse in its systems. Closed loop support. <laughs> unfamiliar ones. Okay, I try to use video games for escapism, so, you know, I mean, this decade. Uh, Alright, anyway. Ash scoffs. Are we making excuses for these bureaucrats now? Peek turns. We are being realistic, Ash. But these people aren't in... Wait, hold on. But these people aren't in increased strain. They are living people. Ash stares at you. Even calling them refugees is just a way of turning a lot of scared, desperate people into a single, monolithic group. Ash slides a container full of mushrooms into one of the cargo holds racks. Look, as much as I'd like to chat, we've still got a lot of space, we've still got a lot of space to fill in this void, so if you're going to help... I think I was just trying to say we need your help, and quickly, Peek says, glancing at her. The refugees behind the court, and they won't be able to hold out indefinitely. We need to get supplies to them in the next 12 cycles, or, okay, deadline. Ash steps forward, or have an inch, we'll have to bear the responsibility for whatever happens next. What can I do? There's three things we still need to secure. Water, food, and scrap components for ship repairs. Ash gestures to the storage containers around the hold. Water we can find a way to source, or, my preference, just siphon off from the underground reservoirs in the greenway. Oh, I don't like that. Peek raises their eyebrows. Ash. She ignores them. For food, things can be tricky. Those mushrooms are delicious, I'm sure, but no, no way can we get enough volume to feed a flotilla. However, I saw an algae stack on the way over. If we can get access, not more stealing, Ash Peek sighs. I didn't say steal. She stares at them indignantly. If we can get access, we can work the attack. Harvest some algae for the flotilla. These stacks churn out vast quantities and short time scales. Uh, saying steal, that reminds me of a trophy I want to chase um, before we get further into this, which I should I wish I remembered before now. Anyway. And the repair components. Peak ass, technically. And the compare oh, that. And the repair components? Just look around you, Peek. This whole place is made of scrap. She shoots you a glance, and I'm sure the sleeper there has resources. They can bring them right here. We get everything before time run, runs out perfect. We get most of it, also good. Either way, in 12 cycles, I'm going to take what we have and go. But how will you get through? Ash shoulders a container. I thought I'd leave that up to you, Peek. They flinch. Are you serious, Ash? I know we said we would help the flotilla, but at what point they stop? Take a breath. Take this seriously, Ash. I don't know the first thing about breaching a quarantine court. Maybe not, Ash looks at you. But they might. They slipped out from the SNR facility, didn't they? Plus, they've been here longer than us. You're always trying to get me to find help. Oh, here it is. She gestures at you. Help. Pete glances between the two of you. I swear to... I need to think this one through. Meet me at the court in a couple of cycles, sleeping. Maybe we can figure something out. Meanwhile, Ash meets your eye, you can help me acquire the supplies discreetly. We have to keep this quiet, keep having a jet of the loop. Once they get suspicious, this is, this is over for all of us. This all suddenly seems a little too real, too dangerous. You've only just found your feet on the eye. This is not a time for causing trouble. Come find us. We'll be out there trying to pull this all together. Ash goes to the back of the hold to start packing another container. Pete, come help me. Pete glances back at her. 
Sleeper Wolf, we didn't have, we didn't choose this either, they lower their voice. Help us finish this. We set up a base camp on the broken spoke. You're welcome to rest there in any of the cots while we work on this. They smile. We are in this together. Peek as shouts, and they walk into the hold to help uh, with the container. As you leave the climbing briar, you look out at the broken edge of the eye's ring where having a discordant blinks with tiny red lights. What are you getting yourself into? Good question. Oh, well, there's space camp. Scrap for the flotilla. Eight of them! Man. That's just run. Okay. Well, first of all, let's steal stuff. Uh, oh, reservoir. Siphon water, hack sensors. Wait for the flotilla. Hacking the sensors instead. Alright, so I need to steal. The freight hub? Is that where I can steal? Steal a shipment! There we go. Huh? Neutral! Actually, no, it's not risky. I will have to relook at the uh, negotiate access. It's controlled by a small collective of farmers. If you want to use them, you'll need to persuade them. I can do that. We have history here. Oh, negative. Boo. Come on, Greenway. What the hell, man. So I'm gonna get plus one for either of those. Uh. Oh, place we're going to walk down. So what's better? It's monitored by web of sensors, hacking them will reduce the alert level, keep you from getting locked out. Habitants will not be pleased. The only way for us to get enough water is siphon it directly from the station's reservoirs. I think I'd rather hack the sensors, to tell you the truth. I, mean, I don't know one's better than the- oh yeah, no, we're already just there. Okay, so basically we're stealing from the Greenway, so at least I've done all the stuff I was doing in the Greenway. Peaks plan, Briar's Hole. Fatilla needs food, water, and components. You may not be able to get all of them, but Ash will take what you can get. All the supplies in the world are nothing without a plan to get them to the flotilla. That's Peak's part in this. And then we need scraps. Okay. Well, we gotta end the day for now anyway. So, so I'm gonna use scraps on myself. Cycle. 
sip my juice. I'm gonna re-roll that, that's terrible. That is slightly better. Finish off the algae stack. Oh, it's a plus two? Yeah, we use fours. Really? for the flotilla. What? Harvest up. There's no... Okay. Huh. Alright. Plus one for either of these. Hacking is safe and that is dangerous and I wanted to hack anyway, so... Neutral. Okay. Um. Okay, that doesn't look like it contributed to anything. I need four scraps, so I should work on that the next time. We got stabilizers for days, so we can use that. Yeah. Because of the time crunch, I don't want to just spend days on getting scrap. Sleeve, you find a note pinned on the outside of the door. It reads, Sleeper, there's something you need to you need to see. Meet me at the cordon as soon as you can. Just keep heading around the ring until you just hit the until you hit the flotilla. I'll be waiting. Peek. I pocket the note and glance around the corridor. Looks like you're doing this. Time to make a plan. Oh, there you are. All right. Well, let's see what you got to do before I do anything else. Sleeper, Pete catches your attention from the shadowy corner they were leaning against. Any trouble getting up here? This place is huge. It certainly is. Haven't it just been busy? Come take a look at this. They beckon you over to a nearby window, which looks across the ruined ring to the blinking red lights of the Haven Edge Court. The Court's temporary structure is a net of metal struts meant to detect and dissuade any ships from entering or leaving the flotilla jut out into the black. And all around the, all around the tugs flit, securing them in place and tending to the red blinking drones that Denmark that demark the quarantine. It's an impressive and worrying sight. What do you think, Pinky? Drops your thoughts. How would you get through? Create a distraction. It's not a bad idea, but what kind of distraction is big enough to get everyone to look away from a ship as big as the prior? Peek squints at the red light. Surely they'd spot and seize the ship. Fair enough. Peek turns away from the window and rubs their forehead. Esh has really wrapped us up into something here, hasn't she? The question is spoken under their breath, and they don't expect an answer. The silence grows. Why are you helping the flotilla? Peek looks up. You don't think it's a worthy cause? They pause. We ran into them when we escaped Hawthorne. Esh insisted we investigate their distress signal. I'm not saying we shouldn't have. Peek stares at the window at the distant looking lights of the arrived ships. It's just... Peek brushes back their hair. Forget it. 
Let's focus on the plan. They flash you an easy smile. It doesn't matter why, we are the ones who are going to help them. The way I see it, there are three parts to making it through the cordon. They gesture out the window at the strange structure. Deception, distraction, and speed will need all of them for a queen passage through. Deception means tricking the cordon security into thinking that we are meant to be there. Maybe a tug escort would work? Anything that makes the prior look official. Distraction, meanwhile, will be all about diverting attention so that no one looks too hard at what the prior is doing. If we can create a gap in the court in scanning and de deterrence systems, that should keep them busy. Finally, speed will mean making sure the briar is ready to roll. Perhaps we can do a little work on this ship to get it ready? As yeah, sure we wouldn't mind. They lean back from the window. How does that sound? Excellent. Pete grins. Don't get too excited. There's a lot to get sorted before we make the run. Pete looks down at their slate. Ten cycles left. They glance out of the window at the court nervously. Ten cycles to gather the supplies and to prep this plan. It's tight. Very tight. Pete looks at you. If this goes wrong, Pete sighs. Just get out, okay? They squeeze your shoulder. I'll follow Ash anywhere, but you you don't need to get dragged down with us. It won't come to that. Peak brightens up a little, of course, but just keep that in mind. Let's get to a peak stretches. I'll tell Ash about the improvements to the briar and the rest. Let's explore the cordon as best we can and look for openings. I have no idea what guardian angel sent you to us, sleeper peak smiles, but I'm very glad they did. Oh, that's nice. New drive. Hello. Breaking quarantine. Peak will need you to scope out and execute safe path through the cordon for Ash. Well, one thing at a time, Peak. Good God. Alright, there's just tons of shit to do everywhere. Well, I got a plus two for that, so let's start with that then. Started there. What's well, over here? Sensors. Negative power to short. Huh. What's the oh condition? Eh. Oh, neutral. Oh, okay, I think I get it. Yeah, I have to use, hack the sensors to reduce those red, uh, to, yeah, okay, to reduce the red ring. I think I get it. Oh, yeah, I need eight. Okay, that'll be the next thing. Actually... Go back here. Is uh. Hello. Oh, did I buy all the scrap already? God damn it. I already bought it. Okay. Wart exchange. No. No, I'm trying to gain scrap, not sell it. No, I don't need a ship mind either. Never mind. Oh, actually, since I'm here. Be 
the cap. Losing dice, that's not good. Look over the pile of scrap components lying in the briar. You look around the bay. It's empty. Ash and Peak are elsewhere on the station or on the bridge a couple of levels up. You begin sorting through the pile, separating out useful components and boxing them by use. You don't recognize everything you find, but before long you get into the rhythm of sorting. As you do, your mind starts to drift, your attention being drawn into the dark corners of the bay. The briar is in surprisingly good condition considering that Hawthorne and XPR must have been operating it for decades by now. The marks... Uh, of care are everywhere, from the delicate patch jobs polished to meld into the original finish, or the carefully bounding wiring running through the carefully bound wiring running uh, through custom trunking. Ash loves this ship that much is clear. Everything catches your eye in one of the dark corners. A matte black steel crates you hadn't spotted before. They are sleek and compact, tucked away behind some of the bigger worn containers. More worn containers. Investigate you. Put the components away and go over your sleek crates, you run your hands across textured surface, but there's a little hint of what lies inside in the opaque metallic casing. Then you see it, a yellow symbol embossed onto the far side of the crate, a universal uh, sigil used by spacers, corporations, and manufacturers alike. It's one you have seen throughout your time as a sleeper. It's meaning all too familiar, explosive contents. You hear a hiss and Esh comes through the bay's lock. You bar she barely registers your presence, nodding as you pass sleeper. She busies herself with the task at the back of the bay. Oh, I'm asking about the crates. Ash doesn't turn around from whatever she's busy with. Just more supplies, sleeper like everything else here. You can't think of anything else to ask, but sense that the atmosphere has now somehow shifted. You quickly finish up the sorting and slip out, waving goodbye to her back as you do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, indeed. Okay, so that's done. The briars hold. There's one complete thing there. Alright. Well, we're definitely going to use a stabilizer. Sure, so can't be losing dice right now. I know that much. Three twos? I don't think so. That's better. Alright. So, okay. Oh boy. Alright. What's going on here? Cellular growth. against the metal crates you just loaded up with algae packed and dried into bright green pucks. Ash hops onto the one beside you, flexing her aching back. Is this enough? Hope the refugees like algae. Uh, is this enough? 
Hesh squints at you as if you had interrupted her train of thought and so woke you have become familiar with. It doesn't matter either way, this is what we've got, she sighs, rubbing the back of her neck. In the past cycles, working the algae stack with Esh, you've had little insight into her mind. She rarely seems happy to start a conversation, but it's always eager to end one. Despite this, you feel like something has grown between you, something that's like silent trust. Didn't we just find crates? Alright. A kind that tends to seed itself in the fertile soil of hard but necessary work. Maybe I found the explosives too quickly. Yep. Something I'm meaning to ask, Ash rages uh, her head cautiously. Go on. Why help the flotilla? Ash pauses her protective instinct, fighting with the trust you've built. You can see her begin to shrug the question off. Then she stops, rethinks, sighs. What you need to understand, Sleeper, is that Erlen's Eye wasn't the only place where the Solheim collapse happened. Sure, Hawthorne, where we grew up, was an XPR installation, but that didn't screen it from Solheim quite under. Actually, Solheim was the only reason XPR were ever here. She pauses, hesitant to get into the whole story, but wanting to offer something. We, she flinches, correcting herself, uh, they are a service corp, you understand. They set up outposts and surrogate systems like this to offer refueling, logistics, and maintaining, sorry, and maintenance services to bigger companies with extraction contracts. She gestures to the eye around her, like Solheim. When Solheim went bust, XPR lost their client, and Hawthorne, well, we lost everything. We became an outpost tasked with just holding on. Keep the refueling platforms running, they said. Keep the outpost stable. Hold on to our flame. She rubs at her head, as if recalling this was somehow physically painful. Do you know what it is like to spend your entire life in a place with no future, a place that exists only to hold a legal claim to a piece of territory to shore up breach of contract negotiations between two corporations? It's like living in a... In, uh, she searches for the word, her eyes jumping back and forth in a grave. She clenches her hands. So if you're looking for the answer, why? Two why questions, that's your answer. We, Peek, and I know what it's like to be forgotten, to be locked out. She stares hard at the side of the stack, the algae whirling against the glass in beautiful patterns, and she doesn't look away. Silence extends, and you realize the conversation is over. Ash seems angry, not at you, but with herself for even voicing such ideas. After a while, you stand and start to load the crates onto a powered cargo trolley that Esh will run back to the briar. As you do, you try to catch her eye, but she avoids it, soothing herself instead with the comforting simplicity of physical work. Huh. Alright. Yeah. I mean, a three is not great. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't want to steal. I gotta use these dice though. Because uh, that's what's left is just the water, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because we did scrap, we did the algae. That's only a plus one. I only got plus one, so three and a two is garbage. Yeah. Ah, fuck it, let's steal. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, look at all that energy. If you get caught stealing. I'm a dirty thief. Still, that trophy didn't go off. Well, either way. Stabilizer. I only have one. Uh. 
collect spores. Well, I have spores. Yeah, I need to forge. Neutral. That's all I got was energy. Alright, well. Take what I can get, I suppose. Can't self repair, don't have any scraps. pretty good. Okay, let's figure out the water here. So, let's siphon some water. Ooh. See, red means bad to me, so I don't think hacking, I don't know. I just don't know. be able to do it in this next cycle here. Uh, oh, I wish that was better. Okay, that is better. But it was better. Okay. Let's finish this off here. Siphon. Tucked into the service corridor deep below the reservoir, Ash is double checking the seals on the water tanks loaded onto the motorized trolley. Though you are enough, uh, far enough away from any thoroughfares not to worry about being overheard, you're still speaking hushed tones. How will you get these to the briar? All good. Ash nods silently and hits the ignition on the trolley to start it moving. Take the other side of the trolley and walk it up the wide service corridor with its flickering lights and Solheim detritus. Uh, you doubt it gets used by Havenage, at least that's the hope. You glance across at Ash, her face a mask of determination as she guides the trolley along. Maybe some conversation will make this journey a little easier. How did you meet Peek? Ash pauses, a little surprised by her question. She glances back down the tunnel, but in this deserted passage she can hardly keep up the pretense of silence. We grew up together, she answers quickly and turns back to the trolley, but she, you can, she can tell you're expecting her to add more. She seems to gather herself for an answer, not wanting to ignore you, but trying instead to get her answer straight in her head. Our outpost, Hawthorne, is not an easy place to grow up. The administrators keep a tight hold of everything, she rolls her eyes, even though they are trapped in the same decaying installation, decaying installation as everyone else. Peak, she pauses. Peek found it harder than most, she pauses again, judging her words. I stepped in to help them out. Silence descends again, but you can feel the wheels turning in Ash's mind as the creaking wheels of the trolley take you along the corridor. Peek isn't the most practical of people. They used to be, well, they needed someone to teach them to look out for themselves. Stand up for themselves. That was me, she smiles. After that, I couldn't get rid of them. 
as she stops talking, but you see her eyes have lit up, and you imagine she's recalling some moment or other from her and Peek's past. You both reach a wide bulkhead doorway and have to stop to shimmy the trolley over the over the edge. When you are done, Esh turns to you. I'm good from here. Head back. And with that, she is gone, moving on to the dark tunnel ahead. You watch her go and then turn around and walk the distance back to the staircase you entered from, the tunnel humming around you as you do. As you walk, you try to piece together Esh's past, but all you have are glimpses of a person she once was. Excuse me, she seems to prefer it that way. Fair enough. So now I have to scrap the cordon. And that is up here. Oh yes, we didn't do any of this. Okay. Intercept comms, blend in with the crew. One thing being about being a sleeper is people always assume you are working, so blending in with tug crew shouldn't be too tough. Well, that's got a plus two, so let's do that. Positive. Nice. Cordon intel and some energy, too. Sweet. Uh, roll the dice. Hey! Two for two. Okay, so that works. Didn't get scrap, but I got like a lot of ship mine stuff. I don't remember having six of those. Uh, let's go back to... I have a lapse. Do I have two? I still don't have two. What the fuck? Alright. Oh my god, my tea's getting cold. Damn it, should've used a stabilizer. Two ones, screw that noise. Ah, it's better. Two sixes. the sensors. Some careful sabotage of the corn system should create a sensor gap that will allow the briar to bypass the automatic quarantine systems. Okay. Crew canteen. Deflect suspicion taking hardline attitudes. Allow to be arguing in favor of the quarantine, making friends with security. They are ways to deflect suspicion. Convince a crew with division rife with division rife among the tug crews gaining support for a supply shipment will just be a case of picking the right crew and approaching discreetly. Interesting. Okay. Slice thrusters. The kind of thrusters the tugs use will give the Briar improved maneuvering. Useful in cramped quarters and Oh, I like that a lot, actually. Tugs have a powerful suit of ion thrusters for rapid man maneuvering. If you can sneak in and slice some off, you'll have a significant upgrade to the briar. Across, all across the court and habitat of security are keeping a close eye on things, gain their attention, and you'll struggle to maintain access. That's fair. Let's start with this, though. Oh, that only counts for one. Wow. Hey, I got some scrap. All right. Scrap is good. OK. Yeah, I'll take those. So, which one did I have plus two? Not that one. 
Well, actually, yeah, you're right, because I haven't done that yet, so, convince a crew. So that system works, that's cool. Oh, those are good dice. A rapid burst of movement catches your attention. A drone, its fins adjusting as it hovers in place, floats in the corridor. Walk away. You turn to walk away, but the drone follows, keeping itself at arm's reach. The drone buzzes closer, and a voice gurgles out of its speaker, distorted and strange. Sleeper, come to the court, and we need to speak. Okay. The drone clicks and whirs, and the recording starts playing again. Sleeper, we come to the court, and we need to speak. Alright, inspect the drone. You move closer, and the drone bobs away to a safe distance, but it, as it does, you see the ha of Havenage emblazoned on its side. Could this be Feng's drone? Satisfied as delivered its message, the drone rotates and accelerates away as rapidly as it arrives. You stare at, at it as it disappears from sight, hoping for some insight that escapes you. To the Gordon, then. Oh, that fang. Oh, God, there he is. Is it him? No, it's a drone. As you enter the passage, that leads to the cordon of flash and movement catches your eye. The drone. Stops to make sure you've seen it, and then flits into a side passage, leading to a set of narrow stairs. You climb up through a dark shaft, the drone stopping at each landing to check you to check you are following. Despite its lack of expression, there's something overbearing about the way the drone waits, impatiently realigning its fins in sequence. After a long climb, you come out into the observation platform, the cordon, and the vast ramshackle refugee ships beyond fill your vision. The scale seems impossible and immediately you feel small and naive for even thinking you'd affect the situation. Something shifts nearby. The drone again? A woman says, oh, Helene. Okay. Frustrated Havenage Counselor. Alright. A woman is standing at the window at the edge of your vision. You aren't surprised you didn't notice her. She too seems impossibly small in the shadow of the flotilla. The drone buzzes by her shoulder and she turns. Sleeper, sorry for all the cloak and dagger nonsense. She nods at the drone, but I have never regretted being cautious. She smiles a tight smile and holds out a hand. I'm Helene. Shake her hand. The tight smile holds, but the drone keeps its signal eye fixed on you. The effect is a little unnerving. Look, she glances around the empty observation deck as if checking for potential eavesdroppers. Let's be straight with each other. I know about your plans, and... She cuts in before you can respond. I understand your motives. You look at her on the overalls, the yellow markers, the H.A. sigil. You've been on the eye long enough to recognize a Havenage member when you see them. Uh, you are Havenage. Yes, I mean, I expect that is obvious, the tight smile again. I hope you won't hold that against me. She glances around nervous. She glances around nervously again and moves a little closer. The entire situation, I am not here to defend it. She glances back at the photo. No one is happy about this. Especially not the refugees. She sighs. I'm not your enemy here, no matter what you think. She pauses. Sleeper, tell me something. What does Havenage mean to you? Hardenhurst. 
Just Quincy, that was unfortunate. But you should know it was one of our own who exposed Harden, and that has been dealt with. Avenage is used to being criticized, in some ways we invite it. Our members are free to bring up grievances in any meeting to propose new structures and approaches. She shifts her weight impatiently. As a counselor, it is my duty to listen to them. That is why I elected. I was elected by the members. Where we are an imperfect system, yes, and each counselor, each member, each representative can be flawed and worse. She looks down. But we keep this place running. That is what we do. And the flotilla? She turns and looks at the clump of broken, of fractured ships. The flotilla is a problem. Can the eye take in thousands of refugees safely? I don't know. The place is a ruin, sleeper. What do you think the council discusses? The price of... Giroli? Make plans to keep this place spinning, to keep life supporting... To keep life support working, to ensure Helene's slate chirps and a grim look... A grim look passes across her face as she sees the notification. She looks tired, the screen light casting her rigid expression in a pale glow. Sleeper, I didn't bring you here to explain how Havenich works. I came to talk about your plan to cross the cordon, breach the quarantine, and supply the flotilla. She looks directly at you. Stay silent. I know you think you are helping the flotilla, but you cannot do this. Right now, halfway along the ring, one of a countless series of debates are being held. These debates are to evaluate the potential harm that could be caused if the refugees of the Flotilla are left to enter the station. These debates are at a standstill. Helene walks to the window. Too many in the Havenage Council think of the Flotilla as a threat. After recent events, a hardline group has emerged, protective, selfish. They seek only to benefit the members. In their mind, the Flotilla is a danger to life on the eye. If you are caught... Crossing the cordon and breaching the quarantine will only strengthen the Hardline Council's case. Criminals who stole a ship from XPR undermining the security of the station? She shakes her head. It's exactly what they want. The refugees need supplies. They do, and that's exactly what I want to give them. But unless the quarantine is lifted through a fair process, they will never get them. She sighs deeply. In those ex-XPR spaces you're running with, Sleeper, do you know anything about them? Stay silent. Why do you think the refugee flotilla came here now? Something is happening in the system. Something is pushing people out of the colonies and outposts that have survived since Solheim collapse. We need to be ready for whatever is coming, ready to protect the eye. I know the eye means something to you. I know there's a reason you are still here. Help me protect it. Helene fixes you with a strong look. Persuade these spacers that this is the wrong move and that they will get caught and the flotilla will be locked down. That habitage will be delivered into those with worse instincts. Forget this suicide supply run with people you barely know. Help me fight for the eye. I know you stop them. Why don't you stop them? If I expose the plan, it's the same as if it goes ahead and they are caught. Every way I look at the eye looks compromised. Compromised. The quarantine justified the highliners get their scapegoat. Hardliners. Don't offer up the excuse the hardliners need to lock the flotilla out altogether to persuade the members that they are the safest pair of hands. She looks at you and points. Please. You look back at her and the flotilla behind and sense a desperation in her plea. Notification breaks us out. Shit. Shrapnel is gross at the page of the data. Sleeper, I need to go. She looks torn. Think about this, please. Talk to the spacers. Help them see reason. And she quickly leaves the observation deck before you have time to respond. You stay for a moment watching the lights and of the tugs and the flotilla and wonder what it feels like to be on one of those ships so close to your destination and yet so far from it. And then you think of the Havenage Council Chamber across the eye where to where the right of the people to find safety where the right of these people to find safety is being debated shiver and then you too are gone back into the stairwell and the cold park below well i was kind of hoping it would have been a thing all right i want those thrusters Wasted the six. Okay, well, we got thrusters. Pete grins as you pile the ion thruster sets onto the motorized trolley in a derelict loading bay. I borrowed this from Esh. I barely know how it works. They seem giddy at the idea of stealing the ship parts from Havenage. I thought you worked for XPR. 
I did, but not as a repair tech. They help you heave the uh, thruster into position. My specialty was computer systems. I mostly worked on keeping the protocols that ran the refueling platforms from totally decaying due to lack of use. There's a load of problems. There's a load of platforms in a load of problems. Uh, platforms in orbit of the moon Hawthorne was on and Cinder itself. Ash and I end up having to head out to them regularly to work on them. Sounds like Howard Burke. Are you kidding? That was the best job at Hawthorne. You get assigned a ship, you get to leave the colony for a bit. It's so much better than outpost maintenance or canteen work. The only reason we got assigned it was that Ash's mother is the administrator of Hawthorne, and Ash managed to get my name on the list too. Peak looks for the trolley's ignition. Ash is always saving me. They find the switch and hit it, and the trolley starts whirring. Peak looks at the thrusters. Ash will install these. The briar is her baby, really. Peak looks toward the bay exit. Truth be told, I was surprised she could bring herself to take it from her mother, losing a ship that has to have hurt the colony. How many ships does Hawthorne have? What is her mother like? Tough, you'd have to keep... You'd have to be to keep control of a service outpost with no services to provide. Peak looks away. Stuff plays overall, Hawthorne Ash's mom. She likes it that way. Peak shuffles the trolley out of the bay into the corridor. They'll manage without the briar. No choice. Peak smiles, and I have to admit I'd love to have seen her face when she saw we had gone. Peak pauses. Don't tell Ash that. They walk on quietly, lost in memories of Hawthorne. Okay, I think I can manage the rest. Peak brushes their hair out of their face. You've done more than enough this cycle. Peak looks over, looks over at the thrusters. Once these are fitted, the briar will handle better than you. Better than ever. You might even th get a thank you from Ash. Peak laughs. Head off into the corridor, the trolley whining, it's high-pitched whine. See you soon. Alright, that's done. Why is it still there? Okay. Oh, but I do have having a suspicion. Not good. Okay. Convince a crew or operation. Ah, sabotage the sensors. Oh. Oh, I better go fix that. There. Alright. Well, I suppose that's good for now. Three cycles left. Yeesh. Uh, not sure how much more we can get done. Use some scrap there. Two sixes, a five, two ones. Um, yeah, I'm not going to risk losing the sixes. Let me see here. Sleeper, Peak is waiting for you when you leave, but they look different. Pale, drawn in. You need to come up to the briar now. They don't meet your eye. What happened? Not here. Peak kisses. Come to the ship. We'll be waiting. Peak walks away. Don't take long. And with that, they disappear around the corner, leaving him anxious and confused. I'll stop. And it's not letting me choose anything over there, so I guess I got no choice. Walk into the climbing briar's cavern in Spain, now filled with crates and containers. Ash is waiting for you. 
in front of her sliced open with its scattered with its insides scattered across the top with its insides scattered across the top of a heavy duty crate is an object is an object you recognize a lean strong oh you freeze come in quick peak nudges you into the bay looking behind you before stewing the entry we have to start being careful you move closer to the container your eyes on the drone splayed out into pieces some parts of it look hooked up to a slate that peak picks up and begins tapping away ash looks up from the dissection we caught it buzzing around nearby, heading for the ship. She leans over and taps the HA sigil on the one of the removed pieces of plating. It's a habit it's spying. We think we got it before it sent data back, but you can't but we can't be sure. Peek looks at you nervously. Ash cuts it. Have you noticed anyone watching you? Any drones like this? Anyone following you up to the briar? I've seen this drone. Yeah, I'm telling the truth to these people. Following you? I met its owner. Ash pauses for a while, peek looking between the two of you. Explain, sleeper, Ash says quietly. Tell them about Helene. You explain that you met with Helene at the court at the cordon, and you tell Ash and Peek about what she told you, that the Havenage Council were debating lifting the quarantine, but they are blocked by the hardliners. You speak faster and faster, but before you can finish, Ash walks away in anger and then comes back again, her eyes burning. What is this, sleeper? Have you understood nothing from what we've told you? She paces in front of you. Havenage are not your friends. They are administrators, which means they are interested only in their own power, their own survivor, their own their own survival, their own causes. They divide people as easily as sorting livestock. The greater good of their work demands it. The wider project of the station, the colony, the nation. Her eyes are as wide as she speaks, her anger barely contained. She wants to help. Ash laughs. Help? Help what, sleeper? Undo the mess of her own creation? She only wishes to placate you so you'll compromise. So you'll do what's expected. Sorry, what is acceptable, not what is right. She was trying. Let me tell you something, sleeper, Esh says, her rage hardening into pain. When people become administrators, they give up something. Some part of being human, being an equal among others, goes away. They start talking about the greater good, the systems, the ways in which their hands are tied, or their process is compromised. My mother was the administrator of Hawthorne, and I have seen what it did to her. That noble, higher calling, it is toxic. People should never have the chance to decide the fate of the others, and those that do, do so at a cost of their humanity. Peek tries to get in, but Ash holds up a hand. Don't start, Peek. Don't ask me to be reasonable or calm down. Thousands of people are desperate out there. Being reasonable will only prolong their suffering. Helene can help. Ash turns away. I'm done with this. You're risking this entire supplier and just by being here. She walks back into the bay and starts checking the straps on the crates. I go next cycle. We don't need you anymore. Get out. Sleeper, you have to understand this is personal for Ash. Helene warned me. Peak tenses warned you what, Sleeper? You shouldn't do the run. What do you expect? Peak looks tired. You glance around the bay of the briar, the walls seeming closer every second. Yeah, uh, this whole thing is closing in on you, and the question is where do you want to be when it all collapses? You look at Peak. And what do you think, Sleeper? Peak? Should we do this thing or not? No. Peek grimaces. I was worried you would say that. To be honest with you, Sleeper, I'm not sure how we got here. I mean, I know what we did, but it's like the universe shifted under us. One moment we were escaping Hawthorne, and now we are here. I have no idea what's coming. They look at Ash. But do you see her? They look back at you. She knows how we got here. She is driving this thing forward, and she, she saved my life. So if your answer is no, I'm going to need you to stand back and get out of our way, because wherever she goes, that's where I'll follow. Don't do this. Peek smiles wildly, their eyes glistening. You can't ask me to do that, sleeper. You can't. Ah, fuck it, I'm in. Okay, then. They squeeze your hand onward. They slip away to help Ash, leaving you alone to replay a conversation in your head, a certain kind of grim determination settling in the room. Last chance to prepare. Well, I tried to warn them. Alright. So, talk escorts. And I'm closer on blind spot, so let's do that. Uh, it's only going to do one at a time, isn't it? Hell, I'm starving. That's not good. Neutral. Hey! Neutral it is. 
Beak is waiting for you when you slip out of the operations center, nervously poking at their small slate. Sleeper, they hiss. I followed what you were doing on the network. Incredible work. How do you do that? Comes naturally. Peak smiles. I can tell if that's modesty or just the truth. Interfacing skills like that, it's almost worth being... Sorry, I didn't mean... Don't worry about it. Sorry. You and Pete quietly slip into the main walkway and work your way back to the public areas of the court and have an inch's head to quickly respond to the flotilla's, flotilla's arrival. And that means a lot of contractors and spacers walking through these corridors. You blend in easily enough. I haven't really met a sleeper before Peak begins, as you might have guessed. They smile nervously. Hawthorne is an XPR service outpost, and since the collapse, no one came for refueling or repairs anymore. So my generation has never met anyone outside the company. We heard about sleepers, they nod in your direction from the data packets that come through from XPR every once in a while. They usually contain a news, contain news along with the corporate propaganda, but the reports were light on the details. S and ARP have kept the sleeper program pretty quiet anyway, and I think XPR are only interested in telling their employees about it because it made living in our company town look like a good life in comparison to being a piece of property, corporate property. They freeze. Sorry, again, I didn't mean they looked down. I'm just not sure how to talk about this stuff. Ah, that's okay. I'll shut up about it now. You walk on a little further, the walkway becoming busier. You both relax a little more and go with the flow of people. I just want to say I think I understand the begin again. Clearly this has been on their mind. I understand the need to escape to get free of it all. They laugh at themselves. The structures, the systems, the company horizons in a company town. They stare ahead. The small places, small corridors, small people. They look away. The slow death it brings. That's it. They turn to you. I get why you signed up to be a sleeper and why... You escape from that too. Uh, I'll just nod. Try to form words, but you can't. There's altogether too much running through your head, but you look at Peak and they look at you, and that seems okay for now. You walk in silence again, each of you in your own thoughts, but moving together through the space nonetheless. After a while, you come to the entrance to the court and where handfuls of workers and crews filter in and out uh, through two huge loading bay doors. People Peak stops. Okay, I'm heading back to the briar. Once again, incredible work on the sensors. That blind spot you created, that should give us a real advantage. See you soon. They head off, disappearing into the crowd almost immediately, out running their own nervousness. Yep. Okay. So that's that's done. And the hangar is done. Yeah. Crew canteen. Now let's get rid of all the suspicion. But I definitely need some food. Nope. Subscribe, great. Hey, I've got three. Okay. Which one will help me the most? Uh, okay. Reel all your dice once per cycle. Conditions breaking. Maybe just that one. So that's the final one, because I did that. That's done. And that's done. Yeah. 
get this done in a day. Oops. Crew canteen. to one of the canteen card games over and over here some gossip but with your focus split you quickly lose a big stack of chits. <laughs> yeah I guess that wasn't gonna work. day. Oh, I didn't, oh, I can still her. Can I really? There. Eh. Not great. She's gone, sleep, repeat, because breathless and shaking. She started the run without us. Ash? Who else? Let's go. If we head to the court now, peak starts back up the court, or they turn back. She has to make it sleep, or she has to. Shiver runs down your spine. Ash, I hope you know what you're doing. Damn it, Ash. You arrive frantic and anxious at the court and peak is nowhere to be seen. Then you hear footsteps hammering on the metal stairway. Helene's drone led you through before, the one that leads up to the observation deck. You leap up the stairs two at a time and make it up to the top, momentarily blinded by the light pouring into the observation deck. Sleeper peak emerges from the light. She just... I know she's trying to protect me, but... It's okay, she chose. What about my choice, Sleeper? I'm not a child anymore. I can fight for myself. They turn away. There she is, peak rushes to the wide window, leaning forward to catch a glimpse of the climbing briar's blue XPR uh, livery, library, against the black of the void. I never know how to pronounce that word. Livery? It's such a terrible word. Terrible sounding word. You spot the climbing briar, glint to blue and white, tiny in tone, arcing down towards the red lights of the cord, and she's exposed, Peek says nervously. They will see her coming if they look. You watch the cord and the buzzing tags, tugs for any sign of movement, any response. The briar calls silently you across your view. Come on, Ash. Then you see a sudden flicker of yellow. Peek sees it too. Those two tugs are heading to cut her off. They grip the rail. Go, Ash. As if responding to Peek's urging, the briar speeds up, diving for the quarter and edge below like a hawk descending. He tends up. wonder if she only makes it if I was able to do all three things. But I think I got the better two of the three. Peek grips the rail as the briar races towards the edge of the cord and that invisible net of sensors splayed between the ships and drones. Now let's hope the blind spot triggered. You think back to the mess of systems that you had to wade through to set it up, the delicate contingencies you set up to trigger the sensor blackout just at the right moment. The briar slides through the cord and as if it was nothing rapidly slipping into the mess of ships in the flotilla. You look like you look back to the pursuing tugs and you see them slow, confused by the cordon's acceptance of the briar and struggle to track their target. Ash is in. Both you and Peek let out the breath you've been holding and laugh. How did she do it? Peek smiles. We did it. Peek smiles wider. Yes, we did. They laugh. Feel a little shaky from the tension, but Peek's ease helps you settle. You imagine Ash steely-eyed in the pilot seat of the briar, searching for a place to talk. Maybe stubborn has, an, has its advantages. You okay? Me? Peek sighs. I think that took years off my life, but I've got to hand it to Ash. She was right. You and Peek turn back to the window looking for the briar again amongst all those halls, the calm fading as new worries settle in. You spot the briar the first time, first this time, talking with the largest of the ships, a vast converted tanker, half of its protective plates removed. You think about the effort it must have taken to get that thing all the way here from the inner system. You watch the briar, unable to get any sense of progress from its placid exterior. They'll be offloading everything now, Peek says, both assuring you and themselves that everything is going to plan. You think of all the supplies loaded into the briar and how long the process of unloading them might take. The bay was packed, rammed with everything it could offer, you could offer, and the thought of bringing that all to the flotilla makes you smile. Well, it took about an hour and change. 
You think of the reaction of the refugees, of the welcome they'll give Esh as the bearer of such gifts. You imagine a smile from Esh as she is lowered with thanks. You focus on that as you watch the briar and continue the nervous wait for it to finish unloading. It's breaking off, Peak points at the briar, and you see the puff of air and dust that accompanies an emergency depressurization. Ash must have ended things early, but why? Then you see them. The tugs closing in on the briar. Havenage must have spotted the ship. You and Peak are up against the window again, willing the briar to save path out of the flotilla. The briar struggles to navigate in the crowded flotilla, and she tugs them, and the tugs seem to be closing on her. Both you and Peak are silent, every bit of energy you have being sent to the ash in the pilot seat of the briar. Two ash in the pilot seat of the briar. She cuts through the crowd of Fatilla, then suddenly disappears. Did the ship hit something? Was it disabled? With you and Peek are searching the black for a sign. Where is she gone? Where are you? Ash Peek is fronting that leaning against the window, but the briar is nowhere to be seen. You both search the Fatilla for that streak of blue, but see nothing. Time passes. Peek paces the observation deck. The hope fades. Stay silent. They caught her. Peek manages to get the words out. She, type her. she delivered the supplies, but they caught her. They slam a hand against the glass. We can get her back. This was stupid, sleeper. Peek looks back at you with her eyes wet. A stupid plan. We had a ship and our freedom. Now what do we have? Peek slams a hand on the glass in frustration, making you jump. I won't be trapped again. I won't. They turn and rush out of the observation deck before you can say anything, leaving you alone with the cold and the light. Drive failed. What? We left a message with one of the red drones for you to meet her when she is done cleaning up the mess. I guess I did need to get all three. Yikes. Well, I need some scrap.
that's where the harvesting is. Oh. Okay. There we go. Finally. Okay, so that's that. Ew. Yeah, that's, well, it's two fives, but still, that's pretty good. I mean, I got a plus one for like almost everything, so. Sorry, sleeper. Helene comes towards you along the walkway, but your friend must have known there was a chance this would happen. She seems unsure of how to greet you and looks nervously around. She's being held along with her ship. Release her. How many times do I have to tell you I don't control habit? Helene pinches the bridge of her nose. Corn security has her for now. She and her ship will be held in the quarantine until it's lifted. As for the quarantine, she glances at her slate. We are working on it, but the council is unlikely to budge now, not after this. She runs a hand through her hair. This is the last thing I needed. Oh. Queen meets your eye. She managed to smuggle some supplies through, but we couldn't trace them. The refugees had already hidden them by the time we arrived. And the refugee. Any more good news? Well, the flotilla got its supplies. Your friend has to be commended for that. Helene shoots your plants. You know, even if her stunt is only worse than the crisis. The reports we are getting from the refugees is that things are stable there, and they seem to be well organized. So well organized, in fact, that they have stopped speaking to us. She looks nervously around. I'm worried, Sleeper, about what is happening in there. But after recent events, court and security are keeping the place locked down tighter than ever. No one can get in. Meanwhile, the hardline counselors are preaching in the chamber as we speak. It's a deadlock, and I don't know when it will loosen its grip. Helene walks a little away and turns back. I wish I had better news, Sleeper, but we knew this was coming. And the refugees still suffer. Enough, Sleeper. My hands are tied. We still don't know why the flotilla came here, why they abandoned settlements and outposts throughout the system to flee to this ruined station. What little we heard from them concerned concern. What little we heard from them concerned computer life and support systems collapsing in waves, machinery in flux. Helene sucks her breath. This isn't over. You think of the people of the flotilla. Helene is right. People don't abandon their homes for nothing. What wave is rushing through the system and... Sorry, it's pressing a burp. And when will it reach the eye? Helene interrupts your thoughts. I have to go. The debates will restart soon and I should be there. She waits for a moment. And it's unclear if she's trying to think of something to say or just waiting for you to speak. The silence keeps you both quiet, and she walks off down the corridor, a nod, the only farewell she offers. You hope that speaking to her might ease the knot of worry in your chest, but it remains there, reminding you of Esh, of the refugees, and of the way to head. It's done is done, no matter how many times you turn it over in your head. You get the feeling you will be needed soon, and for that you must save your strength. What was it Fang told you? Erwin said, the eye opens for us all. Not this time. For now the eye remains closed to those that need it. A shudder runs through you. Something is coming. You can feel it. This isn't over. My, my.
And I got the feeling that's like the end of part one, but, you know. Who the hell knows? Stun is on now. All you can do is wait to see what happens next. So, flux is complete. Okay. So, that is the first part. Alright, so we are finished one DLC. That's pretty good. Uh, we got some good dice here. I can barter for food, but I can't work the stacks. And still no trophy. I was desperate. Everything else seems fine. I don't know where anywhere else I can steal from. I think we will cut it there for today, uh, and then we'll be back next weekend, and we should be able to finish off the um, the last two things, I would assume, uh, and then we'll start the new game, um, and that's going to be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and um, yeah, we'll start that. Uh, I believe I started that on stream before and then was distracted by something else. Um, but 99% sure that's not going to happen this time because all we're doing is killing time until October 20th with Spider-Man 2. That's it. That's all I'm, that's all I'm worried about. Uh, so that's where I'm going to keep 
forging ahead with that. So yeah, Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy after this. Um, and then we'll see how long, where that takes us, because that will be mid-August. Then we'll go from there. Um, probably Outer Worlds. Yeah, I haven't played it since when I first got I haven't played it again since when I first got it, and I've got the gussied up PS5 version and all the DLC that go with it now, so... Uh, PS5 upgrade. So, we'll end it here. Um, yeah. Have some scrap. Feed the cat. Fail to drive. I don't like that. Even though the story continues and all that kind of stuff. That drive failed. But I like the idea of a rescue mission possibly coming up next. I don't know. Or Ash is dead forever or something. Who knows? Come back and kill me. But, uh, uh, yeah, what a great game this has been. Um, I, yeah, I think uh, next weekend we're going to finish this off for sure. Uh, but, yeah, this was a random suggestion uh, by a fellow Extra Life streamer on the Toronto team, Psych Diver, and, uh, yeah, it's worked out tremendously. Um, it's a great recommendation. So, uh, I've completely enjoyed myself. Uh, this genre, this deep space kind of genre, is right up my alley, and as I've said a million times already, the whole choose-your-own-adventure kind of vibe, um, that just takes me back to being a kid. And uh, all the book fairs and scholastic uh, book fairs that went through in grade school, and I just, I just hunted down as many choose your own adventure books as I could. Uh, so yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. So please donate if you can to Extra Life. I specifically support Sick Kids Toronto. They saved my ass a couple times way back in the 80s uh, from leukemia. And I've been an extra life streamer for six years now, and it's the best thing I do all year. Um, and it's great. I encourage you to donate if you can. I encourage you to also be an extra life streamer yourself and help support the hospital in your area, whether it's because just it's in your area or you have a connection to it, either yourself or a loved one. Uh, it's a great organization. Spread the word of extra life. Uh, it's a great way for hell just gamers you know this are, it's a great way to give back um and it's a wonderful way to meet wonderful people so risen 72 on twitter on instagram obviously here on twitch these videos are also uploaded to youtube now on my youtube channel which is also risen 72 notice the theme uh there's even risen 72 on threads and one day i'll finally figure out how to do that exactly i know it's just like instagram but it's only on your phone so I like a website, it's easier for me to just tweet and pass on the same message across the platform, but what are you going to do? Uh, links to my Extra Life page uh, itself and also my Facebook fundraiser page, you can donate through there. There's also a link for Extra Life itself to learn more about the organization and the Sick Kids Foundation page to learn about all the amazing things they do with their donations. Uh, donating to me for sick kids. Everything goes to sick kids. I am not keeping any of it. Um, I am only a middle-aged streamer because I'm using it to fundraise and I'm playing these games anyway. And if I can share amazing games like this and encourage people to buy more of those games, fantastic. I can definitely spread the word of Extra Life, the good it does, and the good that Sick Kids Toronto has afforded me to still be a man in their 40s playing video games, uh, which I do not regret at all. I'm proud of that. Some things you don't have to grow out of everything. I, uh, I pay my bills, and I use some of that leftover money on video games, among other things. But anyway. That's it for me today. We will see you next week. I don't think I'll be doing anything during the week. Uh, probably not. I usually don't. Pretty much the weekend warrior kind of schedule. Um, but I really am digging these Sunday mornings, so um, it's fun because I've got... This is complete. I had a nice easy morning, played some games, and I still got a full day ahead of me. So there we go. 
Alright, have a good day, everyone. Almost said good night. Might be night, who knows? Could be night shift, people. It happens. Alright, so long.